Hello students, welcome back to Physics Wala and in today's class we are going to discuss the summary series of the topic Inverse Trigonometric Functions which is your class 12th syllabus, right? I hope you are all preparing well for your board examinations, the initial class we discussed on relations and functions, right? So this is the lecture number two that we are going to discuss on the second chapter that is Inverse Trigonometric Functions, okay? So um, so basically, you already know what is a trigonometry. So I'm not going to touch what is trigonometry while I'm starting inverse trigonometry functions. Okay, but if you're not very well confident with the trigonometry, so I suggest you to revise once for at least uh, for one hour, to two hours of all the different formulas, functions, and identities that comes under trigonometry, so that. They will be useful here when we are discussing for inverse trigonometric functions, okay? Right, people. So, the first thing that we are going to discuss today is inverse trigonometric functions, like we will discuss what are the, what are the different types of functions we are having, okay? And after that, we are going to discuss the formulas and properties. What are the different formulas we are having? What are the different properties, okay? And different applications. So, today's class and this summary series is basically related or uh, reflect to uh, towards your journey of your board examinations and not for objective like uh, uh, JE or your straight board entrance examinations, right? Uh, so this class is completely related to your CBSC or NCRT, whatever you say, the uh, board's, ex board's examinations, okay? Board examinations, right? Uh, so first of all, try to understand what is this inverse trigonometric functions? You know, what is inner inverse trigonometry, okay? So till now we know what is sin x, what is cos x, what is tan x and all. So the reciprocal for simply as saying uh, sin pi by 6, you know sin pi by 6 is 1 by 2. So when I take the sine to the other side, we'll be having sine inverse of 1 by 2 is equal to pi by 6. Sine inverse of 1 by 2 is equal to pi by 6, right? So in the same way cos and cos. And so when I say sine pi by 6 is 1 by 2, and there is one more person who comes with the answer, sir. Even sine phi pi by 6 is 1 by 2 because sine pi minus theta is sine theta. So, why can't we have sine inverse of 1 by 2 is equal to phi pi by 6? And if this is valid, that means when we are having 1 by 2 in the domain and when we are, ha when we are getting two different values, pi by 6 and phi pi by 6, so it violates the definition of a function. It violates the definition of a function. So it, it is no more a function. So how can you say it is inverse trigonometric functions? No, we cannot say that, right? So definitely we need to limit the range or this, uh, the interval in which we are taking the values for the angles, right? People. So to make this as a function, okay, so we need to, we need to uh, change our domain and range accordingly. The same if for cos inverse or tan inverse, secant inverse, cosec inverse. So whatever interval of range and domain we are taking, so first of all, it should satisfy the definition of function only, then we can go for the next one. Right? So that's the reason. Okay, people, you can see that. So sine inverse x, when x, when x is in between minus 1 to 1, we say mod x is less than or equal to 1. The range, we are only confined between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2, so that the repetitive answers will not come. So when I say sine inverse 1 by 2 in the previous example, and if you are saying the answer is 5 pi by 6, that's wrong because 5 pi by 6 is not in the range. Whatever answer you should get, you should take, we should lie inside the range, right? When you're taking the values inside the domain, the answer should be there in your range, okay? So according to the need, according to the need of making sine inverse as a function to satisfy this function, or in other words, saying uh, making the function bijective, okay, making the function sin x bijective. So we need to convert the range or we need to restrict our range between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. In other, in other sense, the sin x domain, the sin x domain should be limited between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2, okay. People, you know that domain of a function will be equal to range of f inverse. In the same way, the range of f will be equal to domain of f inverse, okay. So the range and the domain will be interchanged among the functions f and f inverse. You know this, okay? So in the same way, cos inverse x from 0 to pi, tan inverse x minus pi by 2 to pi by 2, secant inverse x, 
from 0 to pi the same way but you know cos pi by 2 is 0 so secant pi by 2 will be undefined so we shouldn't take the domain as undefined value we cannot take we can never include undefined in the domain okay so that's the reason we will not have this pi by 2 in the range are you understanding just go in the reverse way so now we are talking about secant inverse secant inverse of x so you you go to secant pi by 2 so in secant pi by 2 it is undefined so if it is undefined you cannot get any value here so we shouldn't include that the same way you have cosecant inverse x and the same way you have cot inverse x okay right so before going into depth of this chapter so many of you have asked me so what is the weightage of this chapter okay people you know in the board examinations you have one marks questions right or two or two marks questions uh, six marks questions you're having four marks questions you're having okay so four or six marks may majorly one of four or six marks questions being asked from this inverse trigonometry functions okay right or in other sense uh, two into two marks okay two marks two questions four marks so in that way the questions are being asked but you know not every year every year's pattern is not the same we don't have any standard blueprint okay that from this chapter only four marks will be given from this chapter only six marks will be given no that that kind of things are not available okay that that's not mentioned anywhere but just from the data from the last last a few years we can say that at least one four or one six marks questions is coming from this chapter for sure right and you know this is the graph of sine inverse x so this is the graph of cos inverse x right and the next we are having a tan inverse x cot inverse x okay people i'm not telling you how to draw this graph so all in detail but actually what happens this is the graph this is the image of the actual sine x graph so what is sine x graph in this interval okay sine x graph will move like this right so it it, it is pi by 2 and it will move like this pi by 2. so so this functions image under the line y is equal to x this is the line y equal to x so this functions image under y equal to x will give you this function okay may not be may not be uh, accurate to the scale but that's how you uh, try to draw the graph of f inverse x from f of x when f of x is known drawing f inverse x is very easy okay right okay so uh, what is this function then so can anyone see can anyone say what is the function this and this so one will be secant and one will be cosecant so now i mean secant inverse or cosecant inverse so i uh, willingly didn't write the function names here okay just for your sake so how to identify which function is what which is cos cosecant inverse x which is secant inverse x people so take any value for example at pi by 2 okay at pi by 2 right so this value i don't know where the graph is for this value uh, I don't know where the graph is. So I mean, the graph doesn't exist. The graph doesn't doesn't exist in this interval. You can see that because if you see the domain and range of cosecant inverse and secant inverse, you will understand from there. Okay, uh, remember cosecant x domain, or oh, just cosecant x domain, or cosecant x range. Sorry, okay, cosecant x range will never lie between minus one to one. So in the same way, the same way for secant inverse x also. Okay, cosecant inverse and secant inverse. The answers which their uh, domains we should not include any way between minus one to one. Okay, so in between minus one to one, there will not be any graph. In between minus one to one, there will not be any graph. So now, how should how to check that thing? At one, the graph is uh, near to zero. The graph is near, to, but here at one, the graph is above, above, uh, I mean reaching some infinity, maybe plus or minus. I don't I don't care all those. Okay. But just take any value. So at one, at one, okay, this is x-axis. For that, that is x. This is x-axis. Okay. At one, it is reaching zero. So what is that function then? So secant one or cosecant secant inverse one or cosecant inverse one. So just take care of those values. I'm not. I'm not going to tell you the answers for this. Okay. So one will be cosecant inverse x. One will be secant inverse x. Which out of these two are cosecant inverse and secant inverse x is for you to identify okay and next we are having some formulas of sine of sine inverse x sine of sine inverse x you can see that again okay? so it is x but uh, people is it always it is always equal to x for example i have uh, i have sine of sine of sine inverse 2 so what is the answer of this can i say the answer is 2 no 
people i cannot have two inside sin inverse x because sin inverse domain is between minus 1 to 1 sin inverse domain is in between minus 1 to 1 so two cannot occupy that or we say the question okay this is completely wrong we say or we say it's undefined kind of thing okay okay so whenever you're considering any functions whenever you consider any functions always people not only in inverse trigonometry wherever if you can if you're considering a function the value which you're substituting inside should be a part of the domain if it is not a part of your domain you can never get the answer for that okay right so x will lie between minus 1 to 1 and similarly y will also lie between minus 1 to 1 and and people often get confused with sine of sine inverse x with sine inverse of sine x so now are these two same see actually these two are same when you have x in between its principal domain or principal range which satisfies the complete thing <coughs> for example sine inverse of sine uh, sine pi by 6 so you can directly write the answer as pi by 6 fine so okay you directly get the value of x but if I ask you what is sine inverse of sine, let's say uh, 10 pi plus pi by 6, 10 pi plus pi by 6, 60, 61 pi by 6. So can you, uh, can you write this answer 61 pi by 6? No, you cannot. Why can't you write like this? Because sine inverse answer should again have some domain and range, right? You cannot directly write 61 pi by 6. That's completely wrong. So that's the reason I'm saying this will be equal to x only if x is in between that minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 then you will get that okay we'll come back to that next so in the same way cos of cos inverse is x tan of tan inverse x x cot of cot inverse secant of secant inverse cosecant of cosecant inverse x, everything will be x provided provided they're satisfying their domains and ranges as given here are you understanding that people okay you should be very careful since many of you do mistakes in these type of things because you don't consider or you don't think that these are important actually these are very important because this itself says the uh, says that uh, gives the details of the functions if this is not listed let's say we really don't know what is the answer for that that's definitely not x it may be some other value or we may not get any value for that right so definitely the domains or range wherever are given are very important okay all the above functions are aperiodic we know trigonometric functions are pure periodic but here inverse trigonometric functions are not periodic or we say aperiodic okay aperiodic next okay so this is what i'm saying sine inverse of sine x so now uh, majority of you maybe maybe you're known only with this value of x the other two verticals i gave you just for basic information okay so let's say when you have when you have sine inverse of sine five pi by six okay the same thing i'm telling you you cannot write this directly as five pi by six unless and until it is in this range it's okay but when your x has crossed this range or this domain okay for sine x uh, this will be the domain okay so when your x has, has crossed this <clears throat> you need to go to other verticals right for example the same way 5 pi by 6 the answer is pi minus 5 pi by 6 then you'll get the answer as pi by 6 okay so pi minus theta so this is the same pi minus x so from there we're getting the answer so uh, there is a there is a still a lot of uh, things that we can discuss about sine inverse of sine x how to draw the graph and all but that's not uh, very relevant for your board preparation but still I suggest you to learn about that because that's a very beautiful vertical okay right next in the same way we have cos inverse of cos x which is x when x is in between 0 to pi and which is minus x when x is in between minus pi to 0 okay again I'm saying so depending on the value of x in which uh, in which interval it is okay maybe more than pi more than 2 pi more than 3 pi so again still answers will vary okay right so you should be very careful with that interval so, so tan versus of tan tan x is x when x is in between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 or if it is more than that or less than that value we'll get different answers okay x plus pi x minus pi if you're in doubt take some example try to solve for that i mean take uh, x is equal let's say uh, pi plus 30 let's say 210 
so if it is tan plus 210 so what you write so answer is pipe i mean you write this is 180 plus 30 so our final answer will be 30 so what you have done you have written pi minus pi uh, so this theta 210 this theta right so or theta or x whatever it is theta minus pi that is the answer you got so you should get that when it is in this range and see x minus pi theta or x whatever it is okay x minus pi are you understanding that okay fine next so in the same way we have cot inverse of cot x three domain three verticals here okay same way you can <clears throat> i'm believing that for you so just write that is equal to in which interval you're getting x okay and if you if you're really curious to write the before and after intervals also it is well and good okay it will be very helpful in objective questions so secant inverse of secant x in the same way please try to complete it and we have some beautiful results here sine inverse x plus cot inverse x is equal to pi by 2 and when i say this pi by 2 again the same thing it should lie in that interval minus pi to minus 1 to 1 or else we will not get the answer again okay? the same way tan inverse x plus cot inverse x cosecant inverse x plus secant inverse x is equal to pi by 2 in other words i can say that these angles are complementary see sin inverse x whatever the answer we are getting that is an angle that is not uh, that is not <clears throat> uh, let's say it's, it's not length of the side or ratio of the side it is an angle okay so these angles when added up if you are giving pi by 2 we know that they can be termed as they can be nam named as complementary angles so sin inverse and cos, cos inverse are complementary tan inverse and cot inverse are complementary like that okay and negative angle sin inverse of minus x is equal to minus sin inverse x for cosecant cosec inverse minus cosecant inverse for tan minus tan okay for but for the remaining just not minus cos or minus secant we will be having pi minus theta okay any doubt just keep some value you will understand why we are getting pi minus theta okay right next in the same way cosecant inverse x is equal to sin inverse 1 by x so i saw many of you writing like this okay sin inverse of 1 by x will be equal to 1 by cosecant inverse of x no that's wrong that's completely wrong people you cannot convert a sine as sine inverse as 1 by cosecant inverse it is not sine and cos they are sine inverse functions okay so the only thing you need to change is you need to change x and 1 by x inside value should change okay outside functions will remain as it is sine inverse x and cosecant uh, inverse x all right good so in the same way we have a uh, cot inverse x two verticals again tan inverse x plus tan inverse y like uh, like it is uh, something like tan a plus b what is tan a plus b tan a plus tan b <coughs> tan a plus tan b by one minus tan a tan b and now again we are having two three verticals here why are we having two three splits because depending on the value of x and y this values will become positive or negative inside and accordingly we should again convert or make necessary changes right just like i told you the graph of tan inverse of tan x right we are having three four vert three verticals in the same way here okay right and when x y is equal to one people remember x y is equal to one denominator becomes zero and we will get undefined or in other sense answer will be the angle related for that will be pi by 2 okay so tan inverse x minus tan inverse pi tan inverse x plus tan inverse y plus tan inverse when we are having three so it is like tan a plus tan b plus tan c minus tan a tan b tan c by one minus tan a tan b minus tan b tan c minus tan c tan a you remember that formula right the simple uh, alternate for that okay sine inverse x plus sine inverse y. what is sine a plus b sine a is cos b plus cos a is sine b right so i'm not going into depth of telling all this how we got that okay let's move forward to applications quickly right sine inverse x minus sine inverse or cos inverse x plus cos inverse cos inverse minus cos inverse sine inverse of 2x by 1 plus x square so it's like a sine uh, 2 theta formula do you remember what is sine 2 theta formula okay one thing you remember is 2 sine theta cos theta the other thing you may not remember is 2 tan theta by 1 plus tan square theta right so in the same way you can see that 2 tan theta by 1 plus tan square theta so we substitute x is equal to let x is equal to tan theta and that converts to sine 2 theta formula so 2 times of theta again we have different verticals depending on the values of x okay so that is sine inverse 
cos inverse it's like 1 minus tan square by 1 plus tan square and that's the reason i'm saying all the trigonometric formulas should be well uh, learned to make this chapter easy or else you will think that these are again a new set of whole bunch of formulas now all these are just extensions or the reverse formats of trigonometric functions okay what next tan inverse of 2 tan it's like 2 tan theta by 1 minus tan square becomes tan 2 theta right or pi plus theta or minus pi plus theta depending on the values of theta sin inverse 3x minus 4x cube sin 3 theta formula what is sin 3 theta formula sin 3 theta formula 3 sin theta minus 4 sin cube theta okay remember that what next cos inverse of 4x cube minus 3x so cos 3 theta formula kind of All right and what else so it's like a 2 sin theta 2 sin theta cos theta sin 2 theta formulas okay sin 2 theta formula kind of the same way cos, cos inverse 2 cos square minus 1 and people so all these values will get i mean uh, majority of those questions how do we get all this is we need to substitute some values let x is equal to sin theta or x equal cos theta so whenever you have these type of terms a square plus x square or root a square plus s square you need to substitute x equal to a tan theta or x equal to a cos theta uh, major of these type of applications are, will be useful in uh, finding the derivatives or differentiation uh, from from there only i brought this table right so all these will be useful in some of the questions when you are trying to substitute something right so i think uh, we are done with the uh, summary so let's move okay we spend around 20 minutes for summary for the next uh, 30 40 minutes let's try to spend up on applications part okay so what is the first question you're having here so that is what is the value of sine inverse of cos 33 pi by 5 so please uh, try that i'll give you one minute of time be quick i think you can you can easily do it okay do it fast I'm sorry. So first thing is, you know, the values of sine inverse, okay, from, I mean, the range where it should lie between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. So you cannot directly write the answers 33 by pi by 5. So what is this value actually? 33 into pi, let us say 3, okay, approximately. Pi is approximately 3 by 5. So just see what is this value. Okay, it's around uh, 100 by 5, around 20. Okay, so you cannot write this answer directly as 33 pi by 5. That's not correct. Your answer should always lie between minus 1 to 1. Your answer should always lie between minus 1 to 1. Okay, so we need to convert this cos of 33 pi by 5 to a value which is equivalent in between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Okay, so you know 2 pi plus theta is again the same angle in that way. Okay, so if you see that uh, cos 33 pi by 5, so as denominator is 5, I can write cos 30 pi plus 3 pi by 5. Can I write like that? Okay, I'm splitting 33 as 30 plus 3. So that will give you cos of, this is 6 pi plus 3 pi by 5. Again, you know that cos 6 pi plus theta is again the same cos theta. So cos 3 pi by 5. So how much is that approximately? Still we are not at. Okay, so we need sine inverse of, sine inverse of cos 3 pi by 5. And you know, cos theta, cos theta is sine 90 minus theta, right? Cos theta is sine 90 minus theta. So, that will give you sine inverse of sine 90, 90 means pi by 2, pi by 2 minus 3 pi by 5. So, sine inverse of, tell me what is the sine of, the LCM will be 10, so 5 minus 6, so this becomes 5 pi minus 6 pi by 10. So, that will give you sine inverse of sine inverse of sine minus pi by 10 and that negative will be brought out from the sine as well as from the sine inverse x also sin inverse minus x is also minus of sin inverse x. 
we learned that okay so that will give you minus sine inverse of sine pi by 10 and if you remember pi by 10 is a value between minus 1 to 1 just keep pi as 3 3.14 Okay, so that is the value between minus 1 to 1. So your answer for this will be minus pi by 10. So that comes with option D. So did you understood how are we taking the, uh, the equivalent angle for this? Okay, good. So let's move to the next question. Okay, the value of expression 2 secant was 2 plus sine sin was 1 by 2. It's a very easy question, very easy. I don't think uh, even 1 minute is enough. Okay, so I'll give you 45 seconds. Do it fast. 45 seconds. Oh my God, I gave 45 minutes. Okay, okay, fine. Fine, so let, let, let's convert this to zero. Okay. Okay, so we're almost... Uh, I almost gave you one minute of time because we already wasted a lot of time. Okay, so 45, 45, 45. Finally, I achieved 45. Okay, so please do it fast. Please do it fast and tell me what will be the answer. 2 sec inverse 2 plus sine inverse of 1 by 2. Quick. Well, mathematics, many of you feel that it is a very difficult topic, but I don't think so, friends. Okay, I don't think so. it is difficult. The only thing is you... Uh, you don't practice enough. I just say that you don't practice enough. You be you will be overconfident that yes, I listen the class properly. I can do it. No, mathematics is never a subject that if you listen properly, you can do that. Okay, no. It's only application based. As much as you practice, as much as you do different applications, any question that comes under examination will be very easy for you. Okay, unless or until you don't practice them. Okay, so two into C K inverse two. Secant inverse 2 means I can write as cos inverse of cos inverse of 1 by 2. So, where is cos inverse 1 by 2? Cos 16, right? So, pi by 3. So, 2 pi by 3 plus sin inverse 1 by 2 is so pi by 6. So that will give you 2 pi by 3 plus pi by 6. So, if you take LCM, LCM will be 6. So, 3 to so 4 pi plus pi, that should give you 5 pi by 6. So option B should be the correct answer. Very easy, dead easy. All right. Okay, so what next we are having? What write the principal value of cos inverse of root 3 by 2 plus cos inverse of minus 1 by 2. I don't think that's a very difficult question. Okay, cos inverse of root 3 by 2. Please tell me where you get at pi by 6, right? At pi by 6 and cos inverse of minus 1 by 2. This, this thing that you need to be very careful. So, in cos, where do you get negative in the second quadrant, right? So, here the angle should between should lie between pi by 2 to pi. So, uh, cos inverse of minus 1 by 2 means uh, uh, pi minus 16. Tell me, tell me first of all, what is cos uh, 180 minus 120? 120. Cos 120 becomes cos 180 minus 16 becomes uh, minus cos 60, which is minus 1 by 2. Okay. So it is minus 120, or we can say that uh, minus 2 pi by 3. So minus 2 pi by 3. So calculating these two will give you your answer. Understood? Fine? Clear? Okay, what's the next one? Okay, tan inverse of 2 cos 2, sin inverse 1 by 2, okay? It's a very simple thing. Sin inverse of 1 by 2, you know it is pi by 6. 2 times of pi by 6 is pi by 3. So, 2 cos pi by 3. Pi by 3 is again 1 by 2. So, 2 and 2 and 1 by 2 gets cancelled. Right? Again, tan inverse of 1. I'm not saying the answer, but I have done till the last step with my uh, voice, okay? Please do that. Okay? So, cot inverse of 1 by root x square minus 1 and write this in the simplest form. Simplest form means we can we can still further try to reduce this. Okay. So see cot inverse means like 1 by 10. So this is something like tan inverse of root over x square minus 1. And if x is secant data, as it is given mod x is greater than 1, it satisfies that. Okay. So let x is equal to secant data. I'm not very sure what I'll get. I know secant square minus 1 is equal to tan square. I'm going to use that. Okay, so tan inverse of root over x square, x square is secant square minus 1, secant square minus 1 is tan square, so tan inverse of tan x, right, tan inverse of x is secant root secant square minus 1, root tan 
or theta or don't take x it we have considered as theta so that will give you theta but what is theta theta is again secant inverse x secant inverse x is equal to theta so theta is equal to secant inverse x okay so that will be your final answer so reducing means we need to again bring to this uh, bring into different functions but an equivalent answer for that okay right next tan was 1 plus sin was 1 minus 1 by 2 you can do that okay tan was of root 1 plus cos x by root 1 minus cos x by root 1 plus cos x minus root 1 minus cos x equal to pi by 4 minus x by 2 so that we need to prove it okay please think about that what substitutions or what different methods you know to solve this i'm giving you two minutes of time so just or else do you have any formula for this i think yes right so please try to do that and this is also a hint tan if just in case tan was you're writing here tan pi by 4 minus x by 2 so how do you write that tan 45 minus theta tan a minus tan b1 1, 1 plus tan a tan b right so tan x by 2 terms will get tan x by 2 means sine by cos something something like that okay please relate like that and try to do that do it fast people we have still a lot of questions to do So do you have any formulas for this root 1 plus cos x root 1 minus cos x just try to uh, bring an equivalent formula from the formulas of cos 2 theta you know cos 2 theta 2 cos square theta minus 1 as well as 1 minus 2 sin square theta we have two different formulas they may be useful here so think and do it fast Your time is up. Last five seconds. All right, people. Okay, so we are done with the time. I hope you have uh, you got the answer. So if we know the formula of cos two theta. Let's say cos two theta. Let us say one minus two sine square theta. So what we get? The first formula we're getting is two sine square theta is equal to one minus cos two theta. Or I can say 2 sin square theta by 2 is equal to 1 minus cos theta. So sin square theta by 2 is equal to 1 minus cos theta by 2 or just okay, finally with uh, okay by 2. So sin theta by 2 is equal to root over 1 minus cos theta by root 2. Okay, root 2 will also come. But what happens? So this 1 minus cos theta become sin theta by 2. In the same way, this becomes cos theta by 2. How? So we have another formula. What is that? Cos 2 theta equal to 2 cos square theta minus 1. So 1 plus 1 plus cos 2 theta is equal to cos square theta. Or 1 plus cos theta is equal to 2 cos square theta by 2. Right? So squaring on both sides, we will get our by 2. So root over 1 plus cos theta by 2 becomes cos theta by 2. The same thing here. Root 1 plus cos x. So this will be like tan inverse of root 1 plus cos x is actually root 2 times of root 2 times of cos theta by 2. Okay. So root 2 times of cos theta by 2 minus, uh, plus root 2 times of sin theta by 2 by root 2 times of cos theta by 2 plus not plus it's minus. Okay. So minus a uh, root 2 times of sin theta by 2 or you can just uh, cancel out all root of, or root 2's so you will get tan inverse of uh, this will be like cos theta by 2 plus sin theta by 2 by cos theta by 2 minus sin theta by 2 or people actually it is x so convert everything into x okay I confused between x and theta so you don't do that okay so now dividing entire numerator and denominator with cos theta by 2 divide with cos theta by 2 so what do you get 
you will get it as is equal to tan inverse of cos theta by 2 by cos theta by 2 is 1 okay and sin theta by 2 by cos theta by 2 is a tan theta by 2 1 plus by 1 minus tan theta by 2 right but people did we did we miss anything because i'm not getting pi by 4 minus x i'm getting pi by 4 plus x so anything that i need to change here people there is something i need to change because see x is not a value between 0 to pi by 2 or 0 to minus pi by 2. x is a bad value between pi to 3 pi by 2. x is a value between uh, uh, pi to 3 pi by 2. So, in this value, what is tan inverse? That we need to cross check that, okay? So, this is equal to tan inverse of, so this is uh, 1 is tan pi by 4, tan pi by 4 plus tan theta by 2 by 1 minus 1 into tan theta by 2. 1 is again tan pi by 4 into tan theta by 2. So, this is something like tan inverse of tan pi by 4 plus theta by 2. But people, so please check that. What is the mistake that we have done here? Once again, uh, based on that interval, you need to be very careful. All right. So, this is how you actually move forward if this restriction is not given. So now I'll tell you what to change when this interval is given. So that is your work to do. Okay, I cannot directly cancel tan inverse of tan. <coughs> See, when x is in between pi, by, pi to 3 pi by 2, I know x by 2 will be a value between pi by 2 to x by 2 less than 3 pi by 4. So that means between 90 and 145 degrees. Between 90 and 145 degrees or 135, sorry, between 90 and 135 degrees, what is sine? Sine 90 to sine 135 is positive, second quadrant. But cos is negative in the second quadrant. So, root over this value becomes minus cos theta by 2 because, see carefully, root is always always positive, no doubt on that. If you don't keep this negative, 2 cos, uh, cos theta by 2 will become positive. So, this becomes positive. This becomes negative. Cos theta by 2 becomes negative without negative without this. This complete thing is already negative. So positive is equal negative is not correct. So it's something like this, people. Root over x square is equal to mod x, which is equal to x when x is greater than 0 and minus x when x is less than 0. You know that. Okay. Root x square is minus x. So here we get minus cos theta by 2. So from there, keep minus, minus, and move forward the same option. In the same detail so finally you will get the answers of pi by 4 minus x by 2 tan a minus b formula that will that gets converted into are you understanding how we are doing this people so this is very important if this restriction is not given if it is given between uh, 0 to pi by 2 or kind of where uh, 0 to pi even because we are talking about x by 2 if x is in between 0 to pi x by 2 will become 0 to pi by 2, 0 to pi by 2. So, there everything will be positive. Okay. So, that's the reason I'm saying even this small minor informations are also important to get the correct answers. If you don't care, if you don't take care of that, that will also not take care of your marks. Correct. Okay. So, that's a beautiful question, people. Please try that. So, if tan inverse x whole square plus cot inverse x whole square is equal to 5 pi square by 8, find x okay so i'll give you some time to think about this so please try to do do, do this students do it fast how to get 5 pi square by 8 
Hmm. I'm sorry. Your time is done. Last 10 seconds. So, people, what is the relation between tan inverse and cot inverse x? Is there any relation? So, we discussed that earlier, right? Tan inverse x plus cot inverse x is equal to pi by 2. So, I can write cot inverse x as pi by 2 minus tan inverse x. Right? People, just for my easy writing, I'm, uh, I'm taking let tan inverse of x is equal to, okay? That nothing important. But just for me to write it easily. So t square plus cot inverse is pi by 2 minus t square. My, pi by 2 minus t whole square is equal to 5 pi square by 8. Right? So t square plus pi square by 4 plus t square minus 2 into pi into pi by 2 into t. So 2 pi by 2 into t is minus 5 pi square by 8 is equal to 0. So can we factorize that? We'll further solve that. 2 into gets cancelled. Uh, that becomes 2t square minus pi t. Okay. So this becomes uh, pi square by 4 minus 5 pi square by 8. So it's 2 pi by 2 pi square by 8. 2 minus 5 minus 3 pi square by 8. Okay. So you need to factorize this. This is a quadratic in terms of t. T means tanvers. So, solve for the value of t and try to get the answer. Okay, it will be easy, not at all difficult. Simple quadratic. If you can factorize, it's okay. If you cannot factorize, go for the algebraic, I mean, quadratic formula. What is that? For ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0, what is x is equal to? Minus b plus or minus root over b square minus 4ac by 2a. My, minus b plus or minus root over b square minus 4ac by 2a. Okay, you can use that formula to get the answer directly. All right, so what's the next one? Okay, 2 tan inverse 1 by 5 plus taken inverse 5 root 2 by 7 plus 2 tan inverse 1 by 8 is equal to pi by 4. Okay, well, so what you can do, you can take two different values. I mean, tan inverse plus tan inverse, tan inverse x plus tan inverse y. You can go in that way, okay? Or convert this secant inverse into tan inverse and add these two and then add this, whatever you do. Or convert tan inverse to secant inverse, whatever you do, okay? People, so it's up to you how to add different values. Okay, so how to convert secant to some other value? See, I'll I'll convert this secant to tan. So let let secant inverse of phi root two by seven is equal to theta. That means we're getting secant theta is equal to phi root two by seven. That means cos theta is equal to seven by phi root two, and you know cos is adjacent side by hypotenuse. Right, and from this you can simply use Pythagoras theorem to get this value. So from there you can find tan theta. So secant inverse can be converted into tan inverse from that Pythagoras application. Okay, then you can further add these two and these two, or you can move uh, two tan inverse one by five plus two tan inverse one by eight. Once you get that, then you add to secant inverse. I mean, convert it to tan inverse, or convert that into secant inverse and then convert to uh, add them. Or convert everything into sine or convert everything into cos. Whatever you do, whichever function you bring it up to here, everything is correct unless and until you don't do mistake in conversions. All right. Okay. Easy question, people. That you can try it later. So what next we're having? So tan was A plus tan was B, tan was X plus tan was Y kind of formula. Okay. You can do that. Okay. Sine inverse of 1 minus X minus 2 sine inverse X equal pi by 2. So let's try to look into that. I'll give you two minutes of time. So try to solve for this table. Sine inverse 1 minus x minus 2 sine inverse x. So how to do that?
So Dan, your time is done. So let me explain that how to do it. Okay. So we'll try to take this two sine inverse other side. So that will give you sine inverse of one minus x is equal to pi by two plus two sine inverse x. Okay, that's the first step. So take this sine inverse other side. So one minus x will give you sine of pi by two plus two sine inverse x. I know sine ninety plus theta. Second quadrant sine will be positive, but answer will be in cos. Sine ninety plus theta will be cos. Okay. So one minus x is equal to cos of two sine inverse x. Right. Cos of two sine inverse x. So let us take let let sine inverse x is equal to theta, or we say uh, sine theta is equal to x. Okay. So one minus that will give you one minus x is sine theta. One minus sine is equal to cos of cos of two sine inverse x. So two into sine inverse x is theta. Two theta, right? And what is cos two theta formula? One minus sine theta equal to cos two theta formula. One minus two sine square theta, right? So one and one gets cancelled. Negative negative gets cancelled. So you will be getting like sine theta is equal to uh, sine theta equal to two sine square theta, right? So what is sine theta x? Okay, that will give you x is equal to two x square. So two x square minus x is equal to zero. X into two x minus one is equal to zero. So x equal to zero or x is equal to one by two. But people, in inverse trigonometric functions, whenever you're getting answers, you should definitely cross check or cross verify whether they, they are correct or wrong. Okay, substitute x equal to zero and see whether it is satisfying or not. In the same way, substitute x equal to one by two and also. Verify whether it is correct or wrong. If it is not satisfying, that will never be a solution. Okay, definitely we will. Uh, in majority of the cases, we we get some extra values which are not actually satisfying the equation. Okay, so that should we should be very careful in that. Fine. So keep x equal to zero. Sine minus one minus pi by two. X equal to zero zero. So pi by two is equal to pi by two cut. But when you keep x equal one by two, so sine minus one minus one by two is <coughs> sine minus one by two is pi by six. Minus two times of sine inverse one by two is two pi by pi by six. So pi by six minus two pi by six will never be equal to pi by two, right? So x equal one by two is not the correct answer. X equal to zero is the only solution. If it is asked number of solutions, one. What is the solution? Zero. Okay, don't get confused. Next, the value of sine of two tan inverse one by four plus cos of tan inverse of two root. Okay, people, well, I don't give you the entire thing, but you can. Easily see that okay. It's like uh, if you take this as theta, if if you take this as theta, let let tan inverse one by four is equal to theta. Okay, so I can say that tan it is equal one by four. The thing is we need to find sine two theta because this completely thing is theta. Okay, so what is sine two theta formula? Just now we discussed. So it is two tan theta by one plus tan square theta, right? So two into one by four by One plus one by four into one by four, one by four whole square. Whatever we get, whatever we get from that, okay. So that will give you this one. In the same way, once again, consider this as theta. So tan two, tan inverse of two root two is equal to theta. So we'll get tan theta is equal to two root two. If not theta, consider alpha or theta one, theta two. Okay, don't get confused between these both the thetas. Okay. So this becomes cos of tan inverse two root two is theta. So from Tan theta, we need to find cos theta. It's very simple, right? Tan theta is two root two by one, and from there you'll get Pythagoras. So one by that Pythagoras, I mean hypotenuse will be equal to cos. That's it. Okay, easy question. Next, solve two tan inverse sine x is equal to tan inverse of two sec x when x is not equal to pi by two. Again, the same thing that we need to convert one with the other. Okay, fine. So let's try to do do this. I'll give you two minutes of time for you. Do it, people, quick.
okay people so what is the formula of 2 tan inverse theta anyone remember 2 tan inverse theta 2 tan inverse theta let's try to stop this timer okay so 2 tan inverse theta if you remember strength that is uh, tan inverse of tan inverse of inside you need to have tan 2 theta formula kind of right 2 tan theta by 1 minus tan square theta kind of so if you write this in in place of theta we have sin x okay so this completely is uh, sorry I wrote theta here, x here. So let, let us say this is x. Okay, fine. Okay, so two two tan inverse sine two tan inverse of sine x will be equal to tan inverse of two sine x by one minus sine sine inverse x. Correct. So that will be equal to. So that will be equal to tan inverse of two secant x. Okay, so tan inverse, tan inverse gets cancelled. So we'll be having 2 sin x by 1 minus sin square is cos square, right? Sin square plus cos square equal to 1. So 1 minus sin square is cos square. So that will be equal to secant x, that means 2 by cos x. So from there, trying to solve, you'll get, you'll get the value of x, okay? Understood? Easy, right? Next one. Cos inverse 4 by 5 plus cos inverse 12 by 13 is equal to cos inverse 33 by 65. Cos inverse theta plus cos inverse theta. Cos inverse x plus cos inverse y. Cos inverse x plus cos inverse y. Cos inverse xy minus root over 1 minus x square into root over 1 minus y square. You can directly apply that to get the answer in terms of cos inverse. Are you understanding people all the different types of applications that are being asked? Okay. So majority of the questions that are in this in this uh, at uh, inverse trigonometry, I can say there are almost direct applications. I don't, I, I didn't, I'm not seeing uh, any uh, indirect questions. Okay, everything is almost direct questions, right? So two tan inverse, you can apply tan two theta formula here, two tan inverse x formula, and then you can add this to tan inverse x plus tan inverse y formula. Okay, so next find the value of cot 1 by 2 times of cos inverse 2x by 1 plus x square plus sin inverse 1 minus y square by 1 plus y square so if you keep x equal to x equal to sin eta you will get 2 tan x equal tan eta 2 tan eta by 1 plus tan square that becomes sin 2 eta and this becomes cos 2 eta so cos inverse of sin 2 eta plus sin inverse of cos 2 eta so you need to solve from there okay people so we still have a lot of applications in this inverse trigonometric functions Okay, so I hope this uh, will be the end. Okay, just one more question. The inverse x plus the inverse y formula, right? So, in this inverse trigonometry formula, we, will, we have discussed all the functions, all the formulas, properties, and different applications that are being asked. Okay, the major types of questions are repeatedly being asked, like uh, converting one to the other. Like, a question will be given in terms of uh, the inverse x and you need to convert into sin inverse. Or, uh, solve for x at uh, the last we saw some solve for x questions okay so those type of questions are very very important okay right so i think that's all for today's class i think this uh, inverse trigonometry functions not very difficult or not a very lengthy chapter i can say just a short uh, chapter just few problems inside that so i think this will be very easy for you and easy scoring and you can do your best okay right so thank you so much friends we will get touch in the next lecture Thank you.